guys, Karen Marchetti here. I am so excited about this Tuesday tutorial because I have all these projects brewing in my head and I'm going to be sharing one each month with you. Um, the first one we're going to work on, we're going to use our excess thread tails. And as long arm quilters, we have tons of excess thread tails. Um, I have been keeping mine for probably about a month now. So I'll show you the little pile we have going. Here is some, just some of the thread tails that I have. And I just sweep them down to the end of the machine and I keep them in a little pile. And now I've made tons of dust. But um, we're gonna be using those and we're gonna be using Ultra Salvi. Okay, and then from there, we're gonna go to the next step of the project. So I'm gonna load the Salvi on the machine and we'll get started. Can't wait. Hi, we're back. Okay, I have loaded a piece of the salvi on my leaders. I have a tray of some of the thread tails. All different stuff in there. Um, I have my ruler base on, which you really don't need on. I just have mine on because it barely ever comes off. I have a cream thread loaded, and right now there's cream thread in the bottom. And like I told you before, it really doesn't matter. So you're going to take some of your thread this over here for now, and you're going to just start laying your thread out. And it doesn't matter how your coloring is, whatever it is, it, it's going to work because it'll be 9 million colors by the time we're done. So there's no rhyme or reason to this part. Put some of that metallic in there. And I actually think this part's kind of fun because you can decide color schemes at this point. Apparently in the past month and a half I've quilted Black metallic, turquoise, purple, cream, and brown a lot. So. So I'm just going to lay that out. And I, I want about a fat quarter size of the fabric that I'm going to be creating. So I'm going to do this all across this piece of salvi. Sometimes there's garbage in my pile. Don't get too crazy with this part, okay? Because you can get insane if you really start trying to think about where the colorings are going. I just don't want it to look like it's laying in a straight line. And you really don't have to worry about um, evenness of thickness right now. Just try to cover everything as best as you can. And this will definitely involve a lint roller when we're finished. Because it's getting messy over here.
So once you pretty much have the whole thing covered, then you can go back in and selectively fill in those thin spots. And I'm just snipping, and you can see, just snipping a chunk of thread to fill in those areas. So I'm just double checking to see where I might need. Right here's a little thin and right here's a little thin. So once we finish those up, then we can get started. Okay, so that looks good enough in my book. drop that on the floor. So I'm going to let you see this up close so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about and then we'll go on to the next step. So we had technical difficulty as in the camera just stopped recording. So I'm gonna catch you up to what we're doing. Um, I put another sheet of salvia across the top and it doesn't matter if it gets puckered on itself because it's water soluble. And in the meantime, I've switched threads to a different color because over here I meandered with cream and now I'm just doing a bunch of loops with turquoise thread. We just wanna hold all three together, the bottom salvia, all the threads, and the top salvia. So I'm going to keep stitching. I'm just doing little circles all over. So it's gonna take me a little while, so I'm sure I will fast forward through this part of the video or just double speed it so that you guys aren't bored. I'm gonna bring you over here so you can get a close up and see what I'm doing. Because you want it pretty densely covered. You want to catch all those little threads underneath. So I'm going to keep doing this and I will bring you guys back when I'm almost done. Okay, so we're back and I just have this little section to go. So we'll fill that in.
And that's it for this part. Now the next step. Okay, so I have put in black thread and a black bobbin, and I'm just gonna make a random grid across this. So I'll continue doing this across the entire thing and I'll be back when that's done. So there is the finished piece for now. We're now going to go soak this and get all of the sulky to dissolve and then on to the next step. Okay, so here is our finished project. And here is a tub of warm water. I'm gonna real quick trim off this extra. I say real quick, but then I can't find the scissors. Okay, let me just trim this off real fast. Remember I told you it makes a mess. We're definitely going to need the lint roller. So we're going to take this and I'm just going to kind of fold it onto itself. already turning gooey on my hands. Bring it over here so you can see. 
already starting to disintegrate the salvi. And hopefully I quilted it enough with the thread that it's going to hold together. It's always a kind of surprise what you get. So you see it's, it's, I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of like a goo until it disintegrates. So we'll let he, this sit in the water for a few minutes and I'll be back to check on it. Okay, so it's been in here soaking, and it doesn't feel tacky and gooey anymore. So, I'll bring it out. And you can see the water is all milky. That's what's left of the salvi. And there is what we have. So I'm going to lay this out, get it nice and smooth, and I will let it dry. And then I'll press it. And then we'll go to the next step. Let's see what side I like better. And I'll change my mind by morning. And it's very, very messy. I'll bring you over here to see it. So it's just a bunch of thread. Now there's that original baseline. That's why I don't really like to do a straight line because it becomes very noticeable. So I'll have to, when we go on to the next step, I'll work around that. So I think it looks pretty cool. It's just a mesh of thread. So we'll let it dry and we'll finish this up as soon as it's dry. Hey guys, I'm back. Okay, this has dried. I let it dry all night long. So now I am ready to go to the next step. And I am using a circle template, different sizes, and a chalk pencil. And I wanna make a bunch of different size circles for applique out of this thread. Thread art, thread net, whatever you wanna call it. So I'm just going to put it on here and move it around until I get something that I like. I'm going to take my chalk pencil and hopefully I can see that just barely. Let me see if I can use the fatter chalk pencil. And that works. I can see it. You probably can't see it on camera, but I can see it. I'm going to make a few different sizes of these. one over the other one. No, I didn't. Okay. Eyes are playing tricks on me. And this will go, you know, depending on how crazy you want to be in picking out your circles be two minutes could be 20 minutes and don't worry as you're going around some of your threads will come loose and that's okay and I've lost my scissors again there they are so now I'm gonna cut these out 
some of them. You can make as many as you want. So there we have a thread circle. And don't go crazy about if your edges aren't perfect because we're actually going to couch over them. In the next step. So you just continue doing this until you have as many circles as you want. And once I get my circle, oh, trim that little guy off. Once I get my circles finished, I'll be back and we'll continue. So here are some of the circles I have traced and cut out. Um, I think that's about all I'm going to be using. And of course I made way too much thread. So I'm going to put this in a Ziploc and save it because I'm sure I'll come up with something to use it for later. And you saw the picture. If you don't have the exact circle you want, improvise. There are 3,000 circles in your kitchen. So, okay, now we are just about ready to put this thing together. Okay, so I have my circles laid out pretty much how I intend to stitch them. So now I'm going to chalk their stems, the strings for the jingle balls. And then once I have that done, I'll just tack it in place with some Elmer's Purple School Glue. And I'm just putting a couple little dabs on it. I just want it to, to stay there. So then I'll start planning out where the balls are going to hang from. Because I want them to be kind of alternating from each side. So there's no right or wrong with this, it's just whichever way you choose to lay them out. And you can move them around as you're deciding where you want them to go. It's not set in stone.
Hi guys, we are ready to couch um, our table runner. I am using this fuzzy velourish thread. It's called Premier Yarns Parfait. Okay, it comes in a big giant skein. So um, I do have a couching foot. I do not have it on. I'm gonna show you how to manually, manually couch because not everyone has couching feet. It, couching feet just make it easier. Um, they're not necessary. We've been couching for years without them. But if you have the opportunity to get one, they are kind of awesome. So I just take my yarn, the tail, I slide it under my foot after I have tied off. I just take a couple little stitches. And you lay your yarn out. And you just quilt right through it because it's very thick. And when you get up to the ornament ball, you're just gonna go around it, grabbing the edge. If some of the threads pop up from your thread art, just tuck them back under, it's not a big deal. And if, you, if you're not happy, you can go around a second time. Now I've made a mess. That's okay. Won't be the first or last time. So if you had missed something, you can catch it on the second time around. And then from there, once you finish your circle, you'll come right back out. Yeah. Don't mind the dogs. There's just somebody at the door. It's okay. So then you'll tie off and you'll trim those threads. So instead of dealing with this big bundle, I'm actually going to cut some to length. So I'm just going to guess, go around once, go around twice, come back out, add a couple extra inches and then snip that off. That should make it a little bit easier. I thought I had already done that, but I didn't. So come down to this next one, bring our thread up. Take your yarn end your hopping foot up. Hold both. Just take a couple tack stitches. And don't worry, I'm going to actually bring the camera over here so you can see exactly what I'm doing with the bird's eye view.
So I have these two to still stitch couch down. But I just wanted you to see how we get rid of some of these. So we take the lint roller and you roll it, roll it. And it will still shed more as we quilt it. But, so that all cleans up real nice. And now my lint roller is full. Well, not quite full, but it gets that. Because this is two layers of wool. Two layers of wool. So it actually, until I trim it away, we get little fuzzies everywhere. All right, so I'm going to finish those last two. And then we're going to start quilting this. I think I've covered every angle so that you guys can see the couching, hopefully.
Okay, so it's all quilted. I think I got most of that on video for you. And I shared a couple places where the threads were coming up, coming loose. Like this one. I'm going to go back and hit that one more time where I didn't catch the edge. Now I'll cut this down and put some binding on it and throw it on the dining room table for the holidays. Hope you enjoyed it.